This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. These lessons can help you stay inspired, express yourself, and introduce you to a community of millions. One class that I particularly enjoy is filmmaking with Penny Lane. She's actually making use of found footage. And if you don't know what found footage is, it's basically just footage that you can find in the public domain online and turn it into a professional looking video. There are loads of other courses on there from logo design through to DSLR photography, through to productivity courses and loads more. It is not just in the creative world either. There's things like accounting and various professional skills on there also. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable. From less than $10 a month, it really is a lot more affordable than one-on-one -on -one classes. At a time where so many important conversations are being had all over the world, now is more important than ever to get your voice heard and explore some classes to unlock your creativity. And the good news is the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description and in the pinned comment as well, I'll put it in both places, will benefit from a free trial to Skillshare Premium Membership. That is a limited offer, so make sure you go and hit that, and that's the first 1,000 people. So if you're not in the first 1,000, then you miss out. So make sure you go and give that a click. And that also, of course, supports my channel as well, and it's hugely, hugely appreciated. For now then, let's get back on with the video, and let's go and check out my F12 and a rather expensive bill. Let's go. Hello, hello, welcome back to TGTV, and more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Joe Macari. Now I'm here collecting my F12 from the service department because I've had some work done to it. But before we get into that, I've been fully, fully distracted. And over my shoulder there, then you can see that, this is in kind of the loading bay at Joe Macari here, but they've had a load of new stock arrive. Not only that, there's a Formula One car in the loading bay here. Absolutely mental. A very chaotic start to the day's proceedings. However, we're coming in here and I'm going to take you for a little walk around before we get going because there is something in here I've been eyeing up. I was actually speaking to Franco, uh, trying to get a deposit down there, but I since realised I don't actually have any money left. In here then, we've got not one, but four laughs. Black, yellow, red, I mean I'm stating the obvious here, and black again. All of these are on the website, so if you want to laugh then you know where to come. But as you can see, we've pretty much got everything. This is unbelievable. This is absolute cash. Green on tan. Oh, woof, 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 woof. Daytona seats, left drive, manual box, woof, woof, woof. Bit of wood on the steering wheel, lovely stuff. We've got an old Aston there as well. Got an old Merc 190, we've got an E-Type, lovely stuff. However, 812 here, piece of spider that's just come in. I do like these, but I don't think it's time for me to get another piece. I've done the piece thing, spider or not, I don't think it's time for me to get another piece to, although if I was going to, this would be a lovely spec. We've got dark blue on the inside here as well. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. Satin carbon everywhere. However, this is the car that I was talking to Franco about the other day. Franco here at Macari. If you don't know about Franco, get to know about Franco. Good old egg. However, I was inquiring about this Speciale. I really, really want a Speciale, but the timing just isn't right. I've bought something else recently that I'm gonna have to show you on the channel very soon. But this is up there with pretty much my dream spec on a Speciale. It's not your usual kind of spec but it is unreal. I absolutely love this spec. Got Grigio stripes, the trickle or badge there, and obviously you've got the see-through engine bay with a carbon engine in there. Absolutely unbelievable. Contrast stitch throughout. Chiaro, kind of gray interior there, the kind of sport tech centers, Alcantara everywhere, fire extinguisher, lovely, lovely stuff. So I think what the market is gonna do on these, TG's predictions here, which might well be wrong, I think we will see pistas meeting the values of these and nice ones of these starting to go above ropey pistas. That's what I think is going to happen and I think we will see that in the next six months. So there are a lot of pista owners trying to get back out and get into one of these. Pistas have dipped a lot and I think these are good news. But that's not why I want one of these. I've just always wanted one and I think at some point I will have to get one into the stable because this is arguably one of the best Ferraris ever made. I absolutely love this and it'll sit alongside the F12. Anyway. We've got an orange McLaren of no interest to me whatsoever. 996 GT3, lovely bit of kit. Satin black 918 Spider. Now this is actually a factory satin black wrap from the Porsche exclusive division. So this isn't a Yanomai special, not that there's anything wrong with that. That was actually done at Porsche. So 
very rare option no one really knows you can even do that but there we go you can spec it in matte black which is a very very nice we've got a ford gt purple event and all that this is chaos this is absolute hell all these cars are on the site by the way so if you like any of these go and have a look i mean to be honest with you that's exactly the same pretty much as the event or the rest oh it's a 50th it's a 50th so not any old event or that is super cool i do really like that they're almost becoming modern classics already now we get onto this this is a dodge time attack viper so this is a left-hand drive 8.4 liter naturally aspirated engine i'm going here and crucially most ridiculously it's got a manual gearbox this is 8.4 liter v10 with a manual box huge wing on the back here carbon absolutely everywhere and crucially it's been registered to the uk so it's all uk registered uk converted and it's actually only 119 which i think represents stonking value for money where else can you get an engine like that a v10 mated to a manual gearbox with something that rare i mean Carrera gt very different offering but as i say it's been fully registered in the uk and converted as well something to do with the headlights so it's actually ready to roll on uk roads which is not a cheap or easy thing to do I suspect this is probably the only one in the UK as well. And as I say, it's only 119 grand, which obviously is a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money for something like that. Imagine that havoc driving around in that. Anyway, we digress. Come around here then. I'm just going to whiz around the rest of the cars here. We've got some classic bits here. I'm not sure how interested a lot of you are in the classic stuff on this channel, but we'll whiz around. We've got kind of classic corner here now. A TDF in the middle there. That is very, very nice. I saw this at the service department the other day, I think, when it was getting PDI'd before it came in. Poor woof. Come around here, then. That's havoc. Genuine bedlam. Chaos. Classics all the way around here, and that's what Macari do really well. They've always got the most amazing... Oh, Daytona's rich. Love that. Boxer. Look at it. Tucked away in the corner. I love that absolutely love that right come on getting distracted getting fully distracted fully fully distracted i think that's enough waffle then it's time to go and grab my f12 from the service department which is actually around the corner if you haven't been to macari before and it's time to tell you exactly what's happened to my f12 and how much it's cost me now it's a short walk from macari sales center to the service center a little bit of background then on my f12 this is its second service and its second MOT that it's been for since I've had it. I bought it in February 2019. Yeah, February 2019, meaning I've had it for nearly two years now. I bought it with about two and a half thousand miles on the clock. It's now done 4,200, 4,300, something like that. It's on the MOT certificate. So it's safe to say I've not used it that much. But then when you've got 10 cars, you don't really use them that much anyway, especially if you've got five jobs like me. So it's not had a huge amount of use, however, being a 66 plate f12 from 2016 late 2016 it came with the balance of the service pack on it now that means it's got the balance of the service pack on it and i believe that this now is its last free service possibly maybe it's got seven years free servicing actually maybe it's not my last free service the warranty has run out though the warranty has literally just run out so i have renewed the warranty up until this point then the amount that i spent on this car is actually 110 pounds in total that's two mot's at 55 pounds each which i don't think is too bad a value we're just approaching the service center now so here around the corner and this is where a lot of the magic kind of happens and you often get some ridiculous cars just sat around here we've got a couple of Callies, and we've got a dino speciale ff pista ff again we've got my f12 here but i just want to show you this very quickly this car here is a one-off tailor-made luso and inside here this is actually owned by a gentleman who's got a tdf as well i don't know if you can see that in there but it's one off you've got a little plaque in the middle there i don't want to touch the windows or anything um but it's all in all a ridiculous spec silver wheels and what's interesting to note about this car no shields little touches here on the front and also these fog lights now these are done by a kind of a, a third party ferrari specialist um, i'm not going to tell you the details of it because everyone will go and get them done and i don't want to uh, do the guy dirty 
but these here are a kind of specialist option. He's also got them as TDF. Really, really cool. And I'd actually love, love, love to put them on my F12. So here she is then, ready to collect. I need to go and put my card in the machine and pay some money over, but she's here, she's back. Fully now warrantied up and ready to go. Uh, and obviously with a service as well. So I always like getting a car back from service. It always drives a little bit better. Whether or not that's psychological, I don't know. We've also got my scooter here. So I'm actually gonna fold the scooter up and put it in the passenger seat here, and then I'm gonna drive home. We've also got some other little bits and bobs here. I'm just coming through. I don't wanna shove the camera in anyone's face too much. I don't think I'm really allowed to film in here, but see through the door. See through the door over there. There's a 250 GTO in there, it's about 60 million quid's worth. The more pedestrian cars, like mine, get serviced in there. That's where they all go. And then you've also got the classic center where you've got the real, real big time stuff in there. So this is a fully, fully Ferrari Class D certified service center. And they literally rebuild 250 GTOs and all the rest of it inside there as well. Again, I can't take you in there. So I'm just gonna pick mine up, chuck a GoPro in here and I'll give you a little chit chat. Scooter deposited then, let's go for a little spin and I'll run you through what I've paid. Right then. Some more background then to put some figures that I'm about to tell you into perspective. I bought this car at the same age as my SV, a couple of thousand miles, 66 plate. Now my first service in the SV, a year after ownership and a year after owning this, this one was free, my SV service was about four grand. I'm already four grand up in this thing and I've had it twice the length of time. So that makes this bill that's just come in slightly more acceptable and i think that's often a misconception with ferraris as well people say you know and even all supercars they say oh you know it's, it's one thing buying one but it's another thing affording to run it but actually if you buy a ferrari that's got its service pack intact and warranty intact you shouldn't actually really need to pay for anything at all as i say i've had pretty much two three years in this car i could have sold it you know this summer and got out having only spent 110 pounds on running the thing obviously you've got insurance storage fuel blah 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 but in terms of like the actual ownership and paying for spares and whatever this car wouldn't have actually cost me anything at all now because i've let the warranty run out after it's four years that means i've actually had to just spend 3,000, I think it's 3,300 X VAT, and that's a warranty for the year. Now, most people say in the trade that these things are actually really reliable. The F12 isn't a car that really often goes wrong, but if it does, and it's not in warranty, it's not something you really wanna get involved with. So, I've just taken a punt, I've put warranty on the car, I can't afford for something catastrophic to go wrong, I can't afford a 20 grand bill, I don't want a 20 grand bill, and I may well end up selling this car next spring, next summer, at which point it'll have the balance of the warranty on it. So, it's a fully cared for car, I've absolutely babied it. What's happening, you right? I've kind of babied this thing all its life and I'm not gonna try and skimp on anything. I want to make sure that if something goes wrong, it gets the best possible repair, the best possible care for it. I don't wanna be in a position where something goes wrong, it's really expensive and I have to skimp. I think, I don't wanna spend 20 grand, maybe I'll just bodge it and spend five. I want this thing to be absolutely tip top and that's the way I run my car. So I've put the warranty on it. Do I feel bad? It's about 300 pounds a month, thereabouts, to mean that I can drive around in this thing and not really worry at all. So. I can justify it, I think it's fine. There's a little bit on the expensive side. It's not ideal, especially this time of year, but whatever. The bigger things to worry about. So that's it really. That's my first bill on my F12. So it's cost me three, well, including that, 3,700, 3,800 odd quid uh, for about two years worth of use, which I don't think is bad at all. One thing the uh, technician guy did tell me about this car. Um, chaos. One thing the technician did tell me about this car actually, and one thing to bear in mind for Ferraris of this age, uh, 458 and F12s, don't let the fuel go below two little rungs on the dash um, because the fuel pumps in these are really, really aggressive and they will suck in really violently at kind of the bottom end of their range. You really, really don't want it to be uh, scrabbling around for fuel. And especially if you're on the beads on one of these things, they do suck through fuel really, really quickly. The software's not great. It's not that reliable. So yeah, if you do have one of these, worth bearing in mind, don't let it get below two rungs. And on that note, I'm at the shell. I'm gonna fill up, then I'm gonna bat it home. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't know if you would have done uh, a little walk around and just me picking my car from service. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been up to with the F12 today. Thank you very much. Ciao for now. Hope you're all well. Hope you're all staying safe and all that jazz. And I'll see you all very soon. Ciao.